Hi, I'm Ron Bennett from School Services of California, and I'd like to share with you the answers to some questions that we at School Services have been receiving very frequently now as districts are developing their local control accountability plans and as they are beginning negotiations, sometimes more than beginning negotiations, uh, with their bargaining units. And the local control funding formula is quite a bit different than the way that we've operated in the past, and I'd like to explain that and answer a few questions about it, mainly related to what is within the scope of bargaining and how you as a district might think about some of these concepts as you approach both the local control accountability plan and collective bargaining uh, with your bargaining units. So let's start off. The first question, is the local control accountability plan within the scope of bargaining? And the answer is plainly no. The plan itself is not a negotiable document. Now, bargaining units and employee groups are given a preferential right to consultation with the district as a preliminary step in the development of the local control accountability plan, but it is then the district's responsibility with a heavy burden on the superintendent to run the process. It is the district's responsibility then to take those concepts and ideas, accept them or reject them, move them through the plan, go to the community groups, go to the broader community for a public hearing um, and then have the board finally adopt a plan that reflects the values of the community and the board with the input of the bargaining units but the document itself is not a document of negotiations and not within the scope of the RADA Act or of negotiations in California. So that's a plain answer. The second question, the increase in the base grant each year and I'm going to separate the base grant increase from the targeted funds increase. Is that amount negotiable? Is that amount available for bargaining units uh, to uh, negotiate at the table? So let's think about that just a little bit, and I'm going to draw uh, one of my humble charts that um, illustrates some points, and uh, maybe it'll help you to understand it. So under the old revenue limit system and the new LCFF system, there are some concepts that are similar. Under the old system of revenue limits, we had a base revenue limit and each year we had an increase to it in some years, the last five not so much, but we had an increase that was called a COLA. And this amount was discretionary to the district. It's for covering all the costs of running the district. It includes salary increases, fuel, step in column, health and welfare, all the things that we do to maintain our district. Under the new system, we have, instead of a base revenue limit, we have a base grant. The base grant is bigger than the base revenue limit because it includes the 40 categorical programs and the increases that the governor has proposed for both 13-14 and 2014-15. But the base grant gets an increase and that increase to the base grant looks a lot like the cost of living adjustment. It is not computed the same way, uh, but it is discretionary money. It is generated by every student in the district, can be spent on any student in the district. Any public purpose for which the board believes this money can be used, um, this money is available. So this money is clearly available at the bargaining table. Now, uh, the LCAP, the Local Control Accountability Plan, covers all dollars for the district, but maintaining salaries, maintaining benefits, all of that should be specified as part of your LCAP and it should come out of these dollars. These dollars are negotiated at the board table and at the bargaining table. Okay, under the old system, we had some more dollars. We had the categorical programs, and sometimes they got an increase, and sometimes they didn't. Under the new system, uh, we have the targeted funds. These targeted funds are getting an increase in most districts. 
These targeted funds are what we call the supplemental and concentration grants. The rules are very clear about these targeted funds are different from these categorical funds in that the categorical funds specified which students the money was to be spent on and what services were to be provided. The targeted funds still specify which students the money is supposed to be spent on, but the district has a very broad range of services that they might choose to provide, and they're defined by the LCAP. So the LCAP, the Local Control Accountability Plan, is the vehicle for distributing these dollars. So is this money in this increase directly available at the negotiating table? Yes. Next question. Is this money directly available, the money from the increase in the targeted funds at the negotiating table? And we believe the answer to that is clearly no. Does that mean this money cannot be spent on employee compensation? No. This money could be spent on employee compensation, but only after the Local Control Accountability Plan has been completed, adopted by the board, um, and then you look at it and see if there are any initiatives within the Local Control Accountability Plan that um, relate to collective bargaining, to employee compensation, to working conditions. So for example, um, the bargaining unit should come to the district and say, you got an increase to the base grant, I want a salary increase out of that. Well, the district has to cover a lot of other things out of that, but this is clearly negotiable. Now the bargaining unit says, we want some of this. So what we advise is that you have a good collaboration at the front of the LCAP development. When the LCAP is completed, if the LCAP says, we're going to lower class sizes and hire more teachers. This money can be used for that. We're going to extend the day and provide a, a longer day. And we assume that uh, you would justify that as providing an increase or an improvement in services to students. You could use this money. If you're going to provide extra days for staff development, you could use this money. The key to this money is the students have to get more. And more is defined in the, in the LCAP in the Local Control Accountability Plan. So when we are in hard bargaining right now uh, with districts that are at impasse and at fact finding and so on, uh, a lot of times what we're saying is, we'll do a salary increase out of this and then we'll give a reopener after the LCAP is adopted in June, in August or September, we'll reopen and if there are things in the LCAP that are within the scope of collective bargaining, then we'll negotiate those, and there may be additional compensation that comes from them, but only after the LCAP has specified what those services are, the board has voted on it, you've had your public hearings, and the students are going to get more. So, so in 2021, when this system is fully implemented, um, the governor's perception of the way the system will work is that the district that gets the most money will get 42% more than the district that gets the least money from this system. That 42% in every document that the state has adopted or that the state board has adopted, that 42% is designed to have additional programs, more services for the students who are generating that money. That's why some districts are getting so much money, because they have a lot of previously underserved students. It is not designed to end up down here uh, where the money is spent for existing services. The baseline is 1213. To use this money, you have to do something over and above that. So finally, uh, can the district use the local control accountability plan as an end run for collective bargaining? And the answer is no. If the district puts into its local control accountability plan, we want to have longer days, we want to have a longer year, it cannot implement those until it goes through the bargaining process. That's why we've suggested that in this transition year, you won't have to do this in the future, but in this transition year where there is no plan, that you have to have that reopener so that you can revisit that when you know what is in the plan and see if it affects compensation. 
In the future, uh, next year at this time, we'd be in the middle of the first year of a three-year plan and we would know what the plan was and we'd be able to do it all at once. In this transition year, because there is no plan, we say this funding's dependent for 13, for 14-15. It's dependent on the plan. For 13-14, you have a pass. You don't have to have a plan. But in the end, the district cannot implement these changes until it goes through negotiations if they affect the, uh, with the scope of bargaining. So I hope that that clarifies for you a little bit about the thinking behind how this money comes to your district and gets translated within the scope of collective bargaining. We'll have a lot more to say about this at our May revision and we'll have a lot more to say about the money that's available. We do expect some changes in the funding that will be available for K-12. So we'll talk about that more at our May revision workshops in a couple of weeks. But we're getting these questions about the scope of bargaining. I wanted to answer them today. Thank you very much.